Welcome to the 2020 Football Virtual Banquet. Congratulations to head coach Brad Cease and his coaching staff for a successful and exciting football season. I want to take this opportunity to thank Coach Cease and his staff for all that you did to make the season happen. I'm not sure everyone understands what the coaches went through to make certain our young men were safe during the pandemic. We were fortunate to be able to play every Friday except one. Thank you coaches for doing an exceptional job this fall. I also want to thank the student trainers and managers for all that you did throughout the season. Trust me, your work did not go unnoticed and you are to be commended for being there throughout the season during difficult times. Our trainers, Sue Hayes, Stephanie Lohman, and Rachel Dean are absolute saints. All that you did for our young men from August 3rd through November 20th was phenomenal. Your handling of the virus throughout this time was so appreciated as you treated our players' daily needs as well as their injuries. Thank you so very much for all that you did to ensure the safety of our athletes. Thanks to our players for putting yourselves out there every day and every Friday night. You made the Pirate family very proud. With a record of 10 and 2 and a return appearance to the semi-state, it was exciting for our school and our community. Your efforts will go down in the record books as one of the finest seasons in our football history. What makes it even more meaningful is that you accomplished this in 2020, the season of COVID-19. Ms. Beckham and I can't thank you enough for your dedication and determination. Lastly, thank you to the parents who allowed your sons and daughters to participate this fall, even with all the turmoil that everyone was experiencing. Thank you for believing in our staff and our athletic department that we would do everything possible to ensure the safety of your child. Together, everyone played a part in making the 2020 football season a reality. And now I would like to announce our Scholar Award winners for fall football. Cheerleading Scholars, Senior Destiny Lilly, 3.58, Junior, Taylor Jackson, 3.60. Sophomore, Brianna Jordan, 3.70. Sophomore, Jariah Rund, 3.90. Player Scholar Awards. Senior, Leon Garrett, 3.50. Senior, Avion Madry, 3.80. Junior, Caleb Carter, 3.77. Sophomore, Jeremiah Roberts, 3.60. Manager Scholars. Senior, Jordan McGee, 3.63. Senior, Shania Williams, 3.67. Student Trainer Scholars. Junior, Rihanna Grady, 3.74. Senior, Haley Moss, 4.11. We also have one blanket award winner for this banquet, and that is cheerleader Ashley Williams, who is a senior. She was a fall cheerleader for four years, a winter cheerleader, 9th, 10th, and 11th grade, and she participated in track as a sophomore and junior. Welcome to the 2020 football banquet. Before we get started, I'd like to thank several people that are key to helping us with our season. Thanks to Superintendent Mr. Brown and the rest of the central office staff. Thanks to the school board for allowing us to play this season. With their support, we were able to be allowed to play football. A lot of schools in the community were not allowed to play, so them trusting our coaching staff, the players, and the parents to do the right thing were really important this year in allowing us to play. On to our school, thanks to Mr. Crutz and the rest of the principals for being there to support our football program. Thanks to Ms. Quiliza, Ms. Beckham, Ms. Buscemi, and Ms. Kowser for all the hard work they, they do for our athletic department. Thanks to Coach Govert and our cheerleaders for the support that they show. Our trainers did an excellent job this year of navigating through COVID and being able to have our players ready every weekend. Thanks to Dr. Perez and Methodist Sports for being there for our players. And finally, the most important people to thank this year are our parents for allowing our kids to play. 
I would next like to thank our coaching staff for the great job they did this year. Our defensive coaches, Coach Sabinas, Coach Curry, Coach West, Coach Roberts, Coach Smith, and Coach Grayson did a great job on the defensive side of the ball. To our offensive coaches, Coach Wissing, Coach Atria, Coach Hamilton, Coach Buxton, Coach Pierce, Coach Jones, and Coach Faulkner for the hard work they put in. And to our freshman coaching staff of Coach Kelly, Coach Kylander, Coach Richardson, and Coach Haynes. Finally, to our trainers, Miss Hayes, Miss Lohman, and the rest of the training staff for being at every game and every practice from August through late November. I'm Lori Govert, the varsity cheerleading coach at Maryville High School, and I'd like to begin by thanking my assistant coach, Ronnie Pedroza, the football team, Coach Cease and his staff for an absolutely wonderful season, Miss Hayes, Miss Dean, our band of pirates, and especially our cheer parents for their patience and support throughout the season. Again, I want to thank our cheerleaders for their hard work, dedication, and loyalty to Maryville Cheerleading. Just like everyone else, we've had a unique start to our year with virtual tryouts, virtual cheer camp, virtual summer practices, and we want you to know we appreciate your efforts to stay positive and your willingness to bounce back when there's been bumps in the road. The life skill of resiliency has been our focus and our saving grace this season. We challenge you to continue to reach your, for your potential and to focus on the good memories and opportunities you have had and those within your reach. We are so proud to be your coaches. I'd like to award our letter recipients, Brianna Jordan, Zoe Lucius, Sensore Peterson, Lorian Williams. Our emblem recipients are Marissa Ford, Sydney Jackson, Destiny Lilly, Ashley Williams, Cameron Darrell, Taylor Jackson, Devin Walters, Brene Bradley, Michaela Green, Ireland Fulton, Taylor O'Hara, Jariah Rundy, and Gabby Swanson. Again, ladies, thank you for such a wonderful season. Know that you are loved, and let's go Pirates. Hi, my name is Miss Hayes, and I'm the head athletic trainer at Maryville High School. And in this year of 2020, it was a great challenge for us, but we had a wonderful football team. Wanted to thank the guys and the coaches for all the help that they gave us, for Miss Beckham and Miss Quiliza for your support. And, but I especially wanted to um, thank my student athletic trainers. I had three returning. I had three seniors, actually, that were great support. And one big shout out to uh, Haley Moss, who was kind of the queen uh, student trainer. Then I had Naomi Griffin and I had Trinity Jenkins. Those are my three seniors. And then I had two new newbies this year, Alyssa Rank and Rihanna Grady. And they were a great addition to our staff. They really came in and uh, listened well and helped a lot. So thank you, ladies. We couldn't have done the season without you. And I especially want to thank two special ladies, uh, Rachel Dean, who comes in and helps us out. She works at Methodist Hospital. She was working here before as my assistant, and she has come in during the fall, the beginning of football, and uh, helped us out when Stephanie Lohman wasn't here. And then she has done a great job with us and works well with us. Then Stephanie Lohman, who is my assistant trainer, who is just a marvelous young lady, she has a high energy, just a lot of great ideas. We work really well together. She has done a great job with the rehab with the athletes and working with the student trainers. So I just want to thank everybody for doing a great job this year in 2020 when we had an extremely strange uh, environment to keep everybody healthy and safe. And we did a great job. I couldn't have asked for a better team to work with in this COVID season. So thank you very much, ladies, for everything. Uh, good evening, everyone. I am Coach Kelly, for those who don't know me, uh, head freshman football coach. I uh, just wanted to talk a little bit about the season that we had this year. Um, as everyone knows, it's been pretty tricky with coronavirus and implementing all kinds of different um, ways to keep the guys safe and, and changing the ways we did the locker room and everything. So the boys had a lot of um, hills that they had to kind of climb over. And, and they did it with five stars. I mean, I cannot be happier with the way 
that the young men really handle themselves this football season. Um, starting all the way back in summer camp and then however many months the season takes, um, they really did everything they needed to do to be successful. Um, when you get a bunch of people together uh, thinking and focusing on one target and really attacking that thing, there really is no end to what people can achieve. And we really saw that this year with our football team, um, all, th all three levels. Um, we struggled a little bit on the freshman level. We didn't win a whole lot of games, but the boys never quit. They never stopped coming. Uh, they practiced hard every single day. They were all coachable. They really put their best foot forward every single time um, through many defeats. They always came back to practice and said, hey, what do we got to do next? Um, and we said, okay, let's work on this. All right, we got to work on that. And I told them every day we need to get 1% better. And because of that, we got 1% better every single day. And finally, against Chesterton, last game of the year, we were able to get that victory. And that's just um, attributed to the coaching staff coming in every day and working really hard, and the kids just not giving up hope, not turning on each other working as hard as they could at every aspect of the football game, doing what they had to do at home so that they were keeping their grades up and staying distance so that we weren't having um, any real big problems with the coronavirus and those types of things. Um, so I couldn't be any prouder than the season that we had today or this year. Uh, thanks a lot and go Pirates. Hi, I'm Coach Buxton, um, JV head football coach for this 2020 season. Um, this season, you know, it was one like any other with, you know, everything that's been going on around the world. Um, you know, it was a shortened summer due to COVID, um, and with that, we missed out on some camp opportunities. Um, and, you know, really the whole COVID thing, it, it, with all that we had to deal with, it was a lot tougher on JV kids, um, you know, just because of the fact that it took them out of the norm of, you know, how JV season usually is when, um, you know, players coming up from freshmen, you know, being sophomores, get to practice with the varsity players for the first time. Um, you know, we weren't able to do that this year. We had to split up and kind of just minimize the number of players that we had. Um, so that was something new that was you know, a little different for our JV players. Um, you know, as well, too, our, our freshman numbers were down a little bit this year. Um, and our JV players did a really good job of, you know, being scout players for our freshman team and just, you know, being extra, you know, bodies at time and giving them really good looks. Um, you know, and helping them become a more competitive group as freshmen. Um, so our JV guys did a really good job with that. Things too that kind of impacted JV, um, you know, not being able to travel, um, kind of having to limit our travel rosters on Friday nights um, and the number of guys that we had on the sideline. So that was another thing that did impact them. Um, overall, um, I feel like we did handle the adversity pretty well um, with COVID. You know, when guys had their you know, time on their own and we weren't doing anything in June. Um, I feel like that was a big part, you know, of our success this season was guys being able to, you know, get to work on their own, um, getting together and, you know, pushing themselves to, you know, work harder and become better. Um, you know, and really just using that time, I think that success led into, um, you know, our outcomes that we had throughout our football season. Um, on Friday nights, we allowed our JV guys to, you know, play in the second half a lot of times just because of how this game was going on Friday nights. Um, we were up pretty big early in the first half, so we did have a lot of guys get experience with that. Um, and that just, you know, that just helped us out even more on Saturday mornings, um, you know, playing at the JV level for those games. Um, you know, overall, we were, we outscored our opponents 235 to 61 over seven games. Um, we finished with a 7-0 and record, so, you know, overall we were a pretty well-rounded team, um, with exception of, you know, our punt team and PAT team um, for special teams, but that's something we'll be working on this offseason. Um, but yeah, overall, offensively, defensively, really good, and we complemented each other pretty well. Um, you know, our defense, we, we gave up an average of nine points a game, and anytime you have a defense like that, you're going to be you know, pretty successful. You're going to win a lot of football games if you're, you know, giving up only nine points a game. Um, you know, and a big part of that was our defensive line, um, you know, how they controlled the line of scrimmage. It helped our linebackers with, you know, being able to fill those gaps in the run game, um, being able to work side to side and make plays. Um, you know, our defensive line, the pressure that they'd put on the quarterback whenever, you know, opposing teams would drop back to pass. Um, you know, and with with the pressure that we were putting on, putting on other teams on their quarterbacks, our, our defensive backs were doing a really good job of, you know, locking up other teams' receivers. So, you know, I really, it's, thinking back on it, it's tough to, 
you know, think of teams really passing the ball on us. And, you know, I can tell you with how we played, teams weren't able to run the ball on us really well. So um, defensively, we had a pretty dominant season. And, you know, that just helped out our offense because we felt like, you know, if we, we could kind of just go out there and play, um, if we would make a mistake, we had a solid defense behind us to pick us up. Um, but, you know, offensively, we were young um, on our offensive line at the beginning of the season. Um, we had a, quite a few sophomores playing on our offensive line. And, you know, early on in the season, our run game pretty much was toss the ball to the perimeter and, you know, let's get our guys in the space and run outside. Um, but as the season progressed, you know, our offensive line was getting, you know, reps against our own defensive line. And, you know, those two groups just made each other better. Um, you know, by the time the year was over, we were able to run between the tackles really effectively. And that just helped us out become, you know, a more balanced offense. Um, you know, offensively, too, we averaged 34 points a game. Um, that run game really helped out our passing game and, you know, let us be more successful with, you know, the outcomes that we had. Um, also, too, you know, just going into the off season, you know, have that mentality. We're, we're losing a really talented senior class. Um, guys are, you know, moving on to college and, you know, life after high school. So there's going to be opportunity for guys to step up um, and fill some roles. So, you know, throughout the off season, make sure we're, you know, working hard. You know, the harder you work, the more you deserve to win. Um, you know, and making sure you're being good teammates to each other. Because, you know, I think, you know, out of anything that we have, I think the fact that we get to go against each other, we make each other better. And, you know, you guys do have a pretty big role on, um, you know, becoming better football players and making each other better. Um, so that's a big part of it. So let's get after it this off season, um, and really look forward to uh, moving on to next season. How y'all doing? I'm Coach Smith, coach of the linebackers. And as a defensive staff, we like to honor and recognize our players for their work ethic and dedication on and off the field. So we honor them with dog tags that also honors our armed services. And these are the list of seniors that receive their dog tags. Number one, Jojo Johnson. Number five, Leon Roberts. Number six, Brajon Peters. Number 39, Messiah Selby. Number 44, Donovan Mills. Number 56, Reuben Harris. And these seniors will forever be a part of our brotherhood, Dark Side for Life. Thank you. These young men were awarded all Dunalin Athletic Conference for 2020. Jojo Johnson was the Offensive Player of the Year. Austin Pupek was the DAC punter of the year. Defensive all-conference were Kenneth Grant, defensive line, Devin Sanders, linebacker, De'Ear Kelly, defensive line, and Devin Davis, defensive back. Offensive all-conference players were Angel Nelson, quarterback, Marcus Hardy, wide receiver, and Lavarion Logan, running back. Now for our all-area nominations. The Offensive Player of the Year was JoJo Johnson. Our first team offensive players were Marcus Hardy, LaVarion Logan, and Avery Kirk. Second team, Theodore Sparks. The defensive all-area were Kenneth Grant, De'Air Kelly, and Devin Sanders. Second team, Devin Davis. Our honorable mention all area players were Jordan McGee, Kenye Fuller Smith, Paris Hewlett, and Angel Nelson. The next four players were named to the various all state teams. Jojo Johnson was named IFCA Top 50. De'Ear Kelly was named to the 6A All State team. Kenneth Grant was named to the 6A Junior All State. And Lavarion Logan, 6A Junior All State. For the team awards voted by our coaches, our most valuable lineman was a two-year starter at guard and tackle, Avery Kirk. Our most improved offensive player started for the first year at wide receiver and was also our starting long and short snapper for our punt and for our field goal teams the last two years. R.J. Donald.
for most improved defense. This player came back from a torn ACL as a junior and was still a, a JV player as a junior. We, we had a lot of high expectations for. This year as a senior, started at linebacker and had a great year for us, having over 70 tackles um, and, and being a, a leader for our, for our defense. Edward Aikens. Our leadership award goes to a player that, that had a stellar career for us for four years. Um, was, was in the top 10 in yards, receptions, and touchdown catches. Uh, was an all-conference player as a sophomore. Was an all-state player as a sophomore. Unfortunately, this year, he had an injury week six against Laporte. But from the time that he got hurt to the time that we got beat in the semi-state, did a phenomenal job of, of, of coaching his position, providing leadership, being a cheerleader, a coach, everything combined, and really impressive with uh, the, the attitude that he displayed after his season was over, senior Armani Glass. And then finally, for our MVP award. This player never left the field for us. Uh, played offense, played defense, was, was a, a very important player for special teams, um, was our second leading receiver, was our uh, second leading rusher, um, our best defensive back, and uh, you know pretty much we knew that we had to get the ball to this guy um, in, in a lot of different ways because of how dynamic he was. Um, our MVP, senior JoJo Johnson. Twenty twenty was again an excellent season, finishing at ten and two. On that team, we had some individual records that were broken for the season and career. Junior Lavarion Logan ran for sixteen hundred twenty-seven yards, which ranks second all time in program history. He had twenty-five touchdowns, which ranks which also ranks second. He had the second most attempts for a season in school history, with over two hundred and eighty attempts. Senior Marcus Hardy had the fourth best season receiving in program histi history with 893 yards. He also, he also was, had the second most touchdown receptions in school history with 12. JoJo Johnson had the fifth most receiving yards in school history with 887. He was eighth in catches with 47 and third in receiving touchdowns with 10. Angel Nelson will go down ranking second in completion percentage, second in touchdowns with 26, and third in yards with 2,517. Armani Glass finishes a four-year career, fourth in career receptions with 85, and fifth in career touchdown catches with 15. And finally, senior kicker Austin Pupek had the fourth, the fourth best punting average in school history at 37.6, and had the fourth most productive season with extra points with 56. For the Pirate defense, Devin Sanders enters the Pirate defensive record books with a 100 tackle season in 2020 and ends his career with 212 tackles. Senior De'Aire Kelly also will get in the dark side wall of fame, having 10 sacks in the 2020 season. From a team perspective, offensively, it was the second highest points per game in school history with 35.6 points per game. We were the fifth highest scoring team in 6A. Defensively, we ranked second in all of 6A in scoring average. And then we also were fifth in point differential in all of 6A football. All right, today is uh, National Signing Day um, for college football players that, that sign with Division I schools. And uh, we're, we're here first, uh, our first of three players that, that signed today. Um, we are with De'Aire Kelly, defensive lineman. Um, you know, De'Aire was, uh, was all-conference, was uh, 6A All-State, had a lot of choices as far as uh, where he could go play college football, but he elected today to sign at uh, Bowling Green University in Ohio. Uh, who is also a member of the Mid-American Conference. Uh, today, I feel like this moment is very, very great. Uh, I feel like a lot of people haven't done it. And for me to be like one of the first people in my family to actually go to college at a D1 college, it that 
I feel like it's a great moment for me. Well, I chose Bowling Green for one because I felt like God put it on my heart first. And second, I just feel like the coaches, they really showed a lot of love and attention to me. And when I go there, I know I'm a uh, major in telecommunications, and I feel like that's the best thing for me. Uh, things I'm going to miss most is probably those Friday nights, uh, having fun with my teammates. That was probably some great moments. Uh, probably even walking the halls in Maryville, seeing all my friends and things like that. And hopefully when I get there, I can meet new people, have fun, you know, go hang out with people, and then actually make a name for myself at Bowling Green and build them up. Um, this moment, I am so excited and so proud. And I look at the times we took De'Ara to camps, and I watched his hard work, and it's just like a dream come true that his hard work paid off. And I'm just so happy, and most importantly, I thank God for giving him this opportunity to um, just be a better athlete and just... Um, just the sky's the limit, and we're here to support him for whatever the future may bring. Uh, this moment right here means everything to me. Uh, uh, from from playing Pop Warner when I first started, and me and my wife first started the year out playing, and uh, just to see the growth and the hard work he have put in over the years, and uh, just I'm just overwhelmed uh, with how much uh, he put into this, and I thank God every day. Uh, for the offers that he received and then by him choosing Bowling Green also. So I'm just overwhelmed right now. And I'm just excited though, just to see him play, man, and go down there and get his school work first, but then be good on the football field as well. And I actually want him to work hard like I always been telling him. I'm always drilling in this area, hey son, you have to work if you want to play, man. So that's the main thing, work. You know, I think this uh, signing day, um, you know, not only now, but when we have more kids sign in February and, and, and even further on, no matter wh whether a kid is a, a Division I player, a Division II player, an NAI player, Division III, um, you know, as, as football coaches, we work really hard to, uh, to, to do everything we can to, to, to play well on Friday nights and, and make the experience as good as possible for the kids. But, um, you know, as, as a coach, Today is uh, you know, maybe more gratifying than Friday nights because the opportunity that um, you know that Deer and and, and and others are getting um, with free education and um, you know the, the the chance to you know when they start their, their their real lives whether that's the the opportunity to play in the NFL or, or to to join the workforce for for Deer to not have any debt uh, going towards that it's a it's a testament to, to the hard work that he put in, um, you know, and, 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 the, and the good job his parents did of, of, of making sure that they, uh, you know, that he had his grades. And, and there's a lot of kids out there with talent, um, but every kid doesn't make a, you know, doesn't earn a scholarship. You know, you have to take your talent. You got to apply it in the classroom. You got you to work hard. Um, you got to be coachable. And, and De'Aire is, is, is all of those things. So, you know, as, 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 as his coach, um, you know, Coach West, his defensive line coach, Coach Sabinas, his uh, defensive coordinator, extremely proud of uh, the hard work that, that he put in, and, and he truly has earned, you know, everything he's got and uh, should be very, uh, he should be very proud of, of what, he's, what he's accomplished. All right, it's another uh, exciting day, National Signing Day uh, 2020. Um, JoJo Johnson, defensive back, uh, getting to sign with uh, Notre Dame today. You know, number two team in the country. Uh, you know, a school that that not only himself and his and his dad uh, have been watching since you know he introduced JoJo to football. So um, you know, the idea of JoJo going and playing for a, a somewhat local school that's uh, you know a big time power on the national level. It's an exciting day for for the family. Also, an exciting day for uh, Maryville football for him to be able to represent you know our school in in such a such a great way. Um. It I really like worked for this, especially like doing all the doing, going to all the different camps and uh, different plan for different teams, different 707 leagues. So I feel that I really strive for this, and um, I really um, enjoy playing for them. Okay. I'm gonna study. Uh, I'm going there for mass communication. Going to be like trying to be actually do this actually, and um, I want to just get better at playing different uh, coverage and stuff. Learn from Coach Mickens and uh, all the coaches on staffs. I'm looking forward to playing a corner because at Notre Dame, especially because um, you're playing against a lot of great receivers, especially at different schools, all the big schools in the country. So that's how you show if you're the type of player you are. So.
playing under the Friday night lights, um, playing with your brothers, especially going to the locker room. Coach Coach C's pregame speech, you know, he always gets all fired up. So I mean, I'm gonna miss that. I mean, just the the mere fact that he accomplished it, you know, and I know all the work that that he's put in over the years, you know, the the great decisions he's made. Um, he hasn't cried about anything. He's put in the work um, in the classroom and on the field. So he deserves it, and I'm I'm excited about it. So, yeah, again, it's uh, you know it, it's really exciting. Um, you know, and, and and today is just one day for the guys that are signing Division One. You know, and and you know for for to have two MAC players and then JoJo go to uh, uh, Notre Dame is is exceptional. And you know, like I alluded to before, you know, we're gonna have uh, more guys sign come um, you know come February. And you know, when you look at the uh, the group of Maryville football players uh, in the senior class this year, you know, we're we're having a kid go to Notre Dame. Um, and we've got some other young men that have, you know, some opportunity to go to some real prestigious, uh, you know, schools to go play football. And it shows you why um, we've won so many games, you know, not only this year, the last couple of years, we had good players, we had smart players, and, uh, you know, we just really good kids, you know, you know, that were great in the locker room, great on and off the field, and, and just a joy to be around. Um, our final uh, our final guy today, Philip Gunn. Um, Sign him with Ball State University. It's a special place to me because, uh, you know, I was able to play there. My wife and I both went there. So, uh, you know, knowing those guys on staff and, and, and being an alum, it's a, it's a special day to uh, have a second Maryville Pirate uh, go be on the Ball State football team. So we're, uh, you know, just excited. Phil was with us for one year and, and an interesting journey, you know, a school that, that, that wasn't going to have football. And, and so he came to Maryville and, and did a phenomenal job. Um, his season was cut short with a with an injury, and and you know, in the short time I got to know Phil, he's one of the toughest kids I've ever met. Because uh, when a kid breaks his femur, he's supposed to be crying and, and yelling and everything else, and he was just hanging out like uh, it was just a, a regular Tuesday. Yeah. So uh, Phil Gunn going to Ball State, you know, another uh, great representative of Maryville football. Well, um, oh, okay. Well, um. They took a chance on me and they believed in me. And uh, I've always wanted to play college football on the highest level. And they have a really good coaching staff. And it just really was like a family environment there. Uh, I'm going to be studying sports communication. And then for football, I'm going to be playing center. Uh, they basically told us since COVID and everything, they told us to always be ready and have a great work ethic when we get there. And because since there's groups that we already have, of the commits in our class so we're gonna already going to be tight knit so they just said be ready because it's a winning culture there and just stay focused um it means the world to me um it's a dream that he's had ever since he played you know in my heart i always felt if he gets to the 12th grade and he's not able to play any further i knew that would be a big hole in his heart because he has passion for it and i always told him too I'm going to do everything that I can for you to play on the next level. If you don't play on the next level, it's going to be because you didn't do something because I'm going to give you 100%. So to sit here today and be here, he gave 100%. So that's why, we, why we're able to have this opportunity. And I'm so proud of him because he did a phenomenal job. I'm looking forward to him uh, being a true, what they um, when you watch games, a true freshman playing. That's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> and I had to teach him that you have to, what you think about comes about. So you have to think on the thing that you want to do. You have to write it down. And you have to constantly tell yourself that you're able to do whatever that thing is. So for me, for him to continue just working, keep a strong mindset, he'll be fine. It's such a great day. Um, you know, as, as, as we've stated before, you know, as a football coach, as a football program, there's more than just uh, your wins and losses. It's uh, the opportunities that, that your program and, 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 and the kids get, you know, not only while they're playing football at Merrillville, but, but hopefully uh, the opportunities that you can get kids past Merrillville. And, um, you know, for us to have kids sign, you know, you know all these years and, and, and including 2020, it's especially, you know, this year's special because uh, we didn't know if we'd get football. And, and you know, uh, I was happy to get to the Andrean game and not knowing if we'd get to week two. And, and, and it just kept going, and, and, and the kids did a phenomenal job. And, you know, when you, when you look at a kid's, you know, signing a scholarship, um, 
it's not only about the kid, you know, it's, it's about the hard work and, and, and all the, uh, the rides and, 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 and sacrifices that the parents made. And, uh, you know, I'm not at that point yet. You know, my youngest kids are not, uh, you know, my kids aren't, aren't that old, but I've been around enough and, and, you know, I was Phil and, and saw what my parents did for me, you know, when I was, uh, when I was younger. So, um, you know, this is, uh, it's not only about, you know, it's not only about Phil going to Ball State. To be honest, today is, is probably a more important day just because I think they're older, they understand for the parents because, uh, you know, they're about to get, you know, free education for their kids. It's, it's a great opportunity. Um, you know, football is a phenomenal game that, that teaches you all kinds of life lessons. And, and you know, I was, I was in Phil's situation, uh, you know, was fortunate enough to be able to go play college football. And then it made me, uh, you know, have the drive to want to become a coach and help the kids out and, and help, you know, them get the best out of, uh, of what their talents are. And, and there's a lot of talented players out there, like we've said before, and Phil is, is, is no different. But when you have work ethic and, and, and you, you take care of yourself in the classroom and, and, and you set yourself further ahead than others that, that are similar, then uh, opportunities like this come about. Leon uh, was in the uh, second wave of guys to, to sign, um, you know, and, and, you know, it's, uh, it, it's really exciting, you know, no matter, you know, where they go. Leon, uh, for people that don't know much about NAIA football, um, you know, it's equivalent to, to just about Division II football. Really good players, um, you know, really good schools. And, and, and the league that he's playing and the university he's playing at is, is the best league in, in NAIA uh, Divi uh, football. Um, I, was, I was lucky to, to kind of get to know um, NAIA football through my brother playing. And, uh, you know, when, when, when we were off, I'd go see him play. And, and um, you know, there, there are guys at Siena Heights and, and in other places that he's going to play that, that are good enough to, to play at 1AA Division I type of schools. I mean, recruiting is a, is a, is a funny thing, you know, the way it works. And, and um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, for, for, for Leon, the, the opportunity to go to a, a, a smaller school enrollment wise, I think he's going to get a, a, the, the attention, um, you know, that he needs from his professors to, to, to do a great job. Um, you know, and, and it's, it's exciting. Uh, Siena Heights has been very good to, to our school. Uh, Ronnie Giles went there a few years back, um, you know, and, and he's going to have the opportunity to play against guys uh, that, that are at St. Francis Marion where, where there's other pirates and other guys from the region. Um, you know, that are there. So, you know, anytime that, that any of our kids get an opportunity to go to college and, and play, and in Leon's case, you know, he's uh, going to go for, for a very good rate, um, you know, to where his parents aren't going to have to pay nearly as much as the common student would. That's, that's why we coach football, to give, uh, you know, to give kids the opportunity through football to better themselves. Um, and Leon has taken, you know, he's taken advantage of that, you know, from, from a kid that, uh, you know, was a JV kid as a sophomore and a junior worked his tail off on a, on a very good football team this year that, that was back to back regional champs, um, you know, for Leon to, to do what he did and contribute the way he did on a really good football team, um, you know, speaks a lot, you know, about his parents raising him, but also about the hard work that he put in to turn himself into a good football player and to earn a scholarship. I'm going to Siena Heights University. I'm playing corner. I'm going to study exercise science. And I like the school because I feel like that it's going to help me a lot, especially like what I need help with academically. They got that to help me. So I should be comfortable without having you know, stress. Well, I'm very, very, very excited that um, he's going off to college. And um, the um, area that he's studying is, um, fits him very well. So I'm um glad about that that they have that there for him and he's going to do well in that and um overall we, i'm just excited and we ready it's a tremendous blessing i've been i started with him when he was six and he's 18 so watching him for the last 12 years got a chance to coach him um pop warner probably about four years and then thanks to coach cease these last two years and just he's a hard worker you know, never the biggest, strongest, fastest kid, but he works hard. So we're excited. We're pretty excited about the college itself. We committed day one uh, just because it was so um, set up for success for him. In closing, I want to again thank everyone that was involved in the football program. And to the seniors 
A big, big thank you to you for making this uh, season one of the most memorable we've ever had. And as I always say at the end of most of our banquets, um, I, I hope you have good memories of this year and, and of your football, of the football program throughout your career here. And please remember to always be proud that you wore the purple and white of Maryville High School. And never forget, once a pirate, always a pirate.